Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and in this video we're going to watch MacGyver from 2016 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. You know how they work, you can bend them to your will. Take magnetic fields for example. Weak ones can be created by running a current through a wire. But coil that wire around an iron core such as hinge heads, and your weak magnet gets stronger. Coil that wire enough times and you've got an electromagnet that will induce an invisible force strong enough to cause interference with nearby electronics. The stronger the magnet, the stronger the interference. Coiling a copper wire to induce a magnetic field is clever and it will work exactly as he did. The type of electromagnet that he just made is called a solenoid. Electromagnets causing interference in other electrical devices is a real phenomenon because there are magnetic fields crossing with each other which will lead to this interference. The strength of the one he just made is not enough to affect the security guard's audio equipment because the earpiece is shielded to protect from situations just like this. And you can tell that because there's insulation around the wires. What MacGyver has in his hand right now is a really powerful magnet. That's it. If you drop a magnet down a copper tube, something really interesting happens. The falling magnet induces a current within the tube. By Lenz's law, the current creates a magnetic field that opposes the field of the falling magnet. These induced magnetic fields are opposing each other, which is why the magnet looks like it's floating. Gravity will eventually push it down, if nothing else. There's my way. Easy is leveraging the host to cooperate, but that could get messy. My way? fooling the scanner into thinking I'm the last person who used it. You see, every time we touch something, we leave a little of ourselves behind. That's because our skin contains salts and oils that are transferred onto the object. Add a little plaster dust to enhance the print, the pressure of a firm hand, and voila. That's not gonna work at all. He, he didn't even put the plaster dust over the parts where the scanner will actually scan for the information. The fingerprint scanner is just going to read the curves of the patterns of his shirt, which don't will match any human fingerprints. Fingerprint recognition systems work by examining a finger pressed against a smooth surface. The finger's ridges and valleys are scanned and a series of distinct points, which end or meet, are called minutiae. These minutiae are the points of which the fingerprint recognition system we use for a comparison. Fingerprint scanners are taking a digital photo and storing it to be compared to other people who attempt to bypass the scanner. They are better than facial recognition scanners because if someone grows a beard or is wearing sunglasses, they might not be allowed into their own phone, but their fingerprints are not changing anytime soon. To the internet? Using this, I can access every traffic cam, ATM cam, and unsecured surveillance cam on the West Coast. Is that real? I'm inputting Kendrick's photo and running an image search. Got him. Those are real, and the NSA uses it to track people all the time. How she has access to it is beyond me. The facial recognition is not live. There's always going to be a slight lag behind it. Reason being, the video has to get recorded and saved onto a hard drive, and her image search is going to be against those hard drives. You can't do a search against a live feed because the data hasn't been processed and stored. It's also going to take more than a couple seconds, even for a supercomputer to process all that information. Videos are pretty heavy data files, and scanning through them takes a while. There's also interference in the form of weather. If it's foggy or raining, the feed won't be as great, and the video will be really grainy, making it much harder for the software to actually do a facial comparison. Running facial recognition technology like this will provide someone's recent whereabouts, but not where they are in the moment. For that information, it's better to trace GPS in their phone and run that location against cameras in the area to verify that the phone wasn't just handed off or tossed in the trash or on a moving vehicle. That old saying, where there's smoke, there's fire, isn't always true. Sometimes where there's smoke, there's just smoke. Muriatic acid mixed with ammonia and tinfoil creates a chemical reaction that releases a lot of smoke with absolutely no other byproducts. Muriatic acid, ammonia, and aluminum making a smoke distraction, that's... that's I mean, I don't, I don't have that, that chemical formula memorized, but I'll tell you what I do know. Muriatic acid is another name for hydrochloric acid, and if you mix hydrochloric acid and aluminum together, the reaction will release hydrogen gas. But it's a much more violent chemical reaction, and it looks like this, rather than what happened in the scene we just saw. 
Ammonia having a pH of 11 to 13 means it's a base. Hydrochloric acid, as the name suggests, is an acid with a pH of 1.1. This acid-base reaction between the two liquids produces ammonium chloride and looks much more like the gas we see in this scene of MacGyver. There are actually many small white crystals in that chaos of the chemical reaction that appear as a cloud of white smoke. Ammonium chloride is really interesting because when you heat it up like what's happening here, it undergoes sublimation, which means the solid becomes a gas and then returns to a solid again. The part of the test tube with the solid ammonium chloride that's heating up is turning into a gas and back to a solid at the colder end of the test tube all in real time. Great. That doesn't sound very encouraging. Yeah, well, you know how you always have to pick between cutting the blue wire and the red wire? Yeah. Well, I've got about 12 wires down here and they're all green. Well, you better pick one quick. The whole cutting the wire scene is in a bunch of movies and TV shows, and it's always really fun, a great way to build suspense. It's just the reality is they can't all be green. Green is generally the color used for a ground wire or exposed copper is also used in times. The reason we use a common color system for all of our wires in an electrical device has to do with organization and repair. If a wire is damaged, then you know which part of the circuit needs to be fixed because of the color of the damaged wire. During the assembly process, the colors indicate how much of the circuit is also completed. If you have red wires for everything and you forget where you are halfway through, you need to retrace each individual wire and that could be a real pain. And like the metric system, this color coding process is not universal. Depending on which country the manufacturer of the electrical device is in question from, it could throw the repairman for a loop. Most companies will specify which color wires they want for each specific wire harness they're making, which is, isn't always a problem, but you would be surprised. <laughs> if nothing is specified, then there is a default color for these wires to be used. I've always wondered though, why not just cut every wire? It will completely break the circuit and no power is transferred anywhere. The bomb will never go off. If you only had to cut one wire, usually the green will work because the circuit will have no ground and it'll just short or completely fail. The original show MacGyver aired on ABC for seven seasons from 1985 to 1992. All of MacGyver's exploits on the show were vetted by consulting scientists for the show's writers to ensure a basis on scientific principles. In the few cases where MacGyver used household chemicals to mix poisons, explosives, or other items deemed too dangerous to be accurately described to the public, details were altered or left vague, or an essential component of the step was omitted. The show's writers based MacGyver's inventions on items they found on location. Concepts from scientific advisors John Koivula and Jim Green and real events. The show offered up a monetary prize to people who sent good ideas for the show. A young fan suggested that MacGyver could patch up a vehicle's radiator by cracking an egg into it. The episode Bushmaster was constructed around this trick and the fan was rewarded. The word MacGyver, however, entered the Oxford Dictionaries in 2015 as a verb, meaning make or repair, specifically an object, in an improvised or inventive way making use of whatever items are at hand. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more MacGyver, let me know in the comments section down below.